All right, we're here today. We got this 1340 variable speed here. It's got the new CSS system on it. Uh, this system here, constant surface speed is what, it's, what it is. Uh, you got your on and off. These are the controls for it. On, it's off right now. You turn the CSS on, and here's some gear selection. Uh, low and high, depending what you're in. You're in. This would be low, this is high, and it's in high, so it's on high. Uh, on a normal DRO, this knob and this knob's not added because you don't need it because everything's ran through the, you can run every, off the pod. But if, <clears throat> with the CSS, when it's on the pod, you can, the pod's not in use because everything is programmed through the control here for the speeds. And you got your power light here. You got your on and off for your coolant. You got your jog button and you got your emergency E stop. This right, this control right here, this knob here controls your speed. So right now this machine's at, it's in gear at 400 to 2500 so you can start off at 400 and crank it all the way up to 2500 same way with the 20 to 400 just turn the knob and this right here tells you what rpms you are running this knob tells you lets you know what rpms you're running at with the machine now with this particular model here if you got your css on your pod doesn't work and depending on what gear range you're in, you have to be, you have to select it, which so 20 to 400 would be your low range, and 400 to 2500 would be your high range. And in order to, without the pod running, because the machine, it'll just run, it's all programmed what your speeds you want inside, you programming inside your control here to run your CSS. Now, if you switch your CSS off, your pod, you can run your pod, from 400, since this is already in gear at 400, 2500, you can run your pod between the 400 all the way up to 2500 by just turning it. Same way with if using the low range 20, 20 to 400, you can do the same. So, and then you drop down, so this is your gear selector. What speeds you want to be running in for high range 400 to 2500, and you got 20 to 400, depending on your application you're going to run. Then over here you got your high, high and low switch for for your speed for running the longitude. You got your forward and reverse on running your longitude. And then you got your thread and feed chart. Here's your chart for your inch, your metrics, your inches. And this is for your longitude feed chart. This is all your controls to set your threads up or your longitude cut down through here and then also on this you've got as you can see you've got your oil levels here the oil levels should always be this one should be a quarter inch bubble right here at all times and if it's not in order to fill it you come over here take the best there's a side cover take it off you fill it up through this this uh, neck here and then on the spindle box itself should be halfway full and if it's not you need to add more oil there's a filler cap on top of the machine and then right here as you will see it says remove this plate to gain access to your feed clutch this clutch this machine these are designed so you can adjust your feed clutch so you don't have an operator it would happen to rip out your gearbox and cost you thousands of dollars to replace it so you can adjust that that the operators feel and then jump over here here's your main controls for all your aprons and your cross slide cross slide your apron moving your apron back and forth your <clears throat> handle for engaging either your cross feed or your longitude this handle here is engaging your half nut for cutting threads and this is your thread dial chasing so to catch back up on the threads. And then you come down here, this button here, you pull in and out depending 
on what. If you're feeding in, you don't want it to feed in, you want it to feed back, you would pull it out. And if the machine, the apron was going, feeding forward, you didn't want it to feed forward, you push it in and it would feed back instead. And then you have your oil pump here, which we recommend pumping it at least three times a day at the beginning of a shift. If heavy, heavy, heavy use is done, going on with it constantly, you could do it a couple more times, no problem. You have an oiler here, recommend three or four drops of oil in that a day. And then you have your oil gauge right here, halfway. Mark is, it's full, that's where it should be at. And if you had to add oil, here's an oil cap to fill that up. And then you have, last but least, this is your forward and your reverse lever to engage your spindle. Reverse lever, go up, and then you got your forward for turning the spindle on. And then you come back here, you got, you got another oiler here. You should add, fill this up, four or five drops, turn your machine on, let it run, the lube, all the bearings inside here on your shafts. And that wraps it up. Uh, if you got any questions, please contact us at Blonde Limited. We'll answer anything you got. Thank you.